Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. As you can see from the title of the today's episode, nothing good really happened. After recovering from the technical difficulties encountered in our previous episode, when the whole episode footage was corrupted and became unavailable, we are returning to the orbit around EVE and we actually lost our whole transfer, so we're going to try and land there and see what is going to happen. And here is the worst fail of the episode. I'm trying to lower the periapsis of my orbit using the RCS fuel and it is quite obvious that there was not enough of it. So I decided, well, let's try to get some signs, and maybe we can return our brave Kerbonauts home. I can tell you in advance, it was not to be. So here we are doing the signs, and time warping to the transfer window. So here is our transfer window, let's create a maneuver node in proper side. So let's do it here, tweak it a little bit to get an encounter with Kerbin. And so far everything looks good, right? We get a nice encounter, it's only 1000 delta V, just a little bit over, and we have a lot of delta V, so, well, things should work, right? Nope, they shouldn't. So let's do the first thing and try to activate the relay on our orbital stage so that maybe we can relay the power from the Kerbin to our vessel. Okay, let's time warp. Mm -hmm. Drop our heat shield because we don't need it. And nope, nothing does work. So let's see, maybe the power station was in the shadow? Nope. Hmm, there must be something wrong. Let's see our station, let's deactivate it. Maybe we can get power directly from the power station. Maybe it will be more efficient, who knows. Let's also check our power station in the orbit of Kerbin. Well, we burned all of our tritium resources. So the fusion reactor is basically useless. And we can only use the fission reactor for the powering of the thing. But it is offline. Huh, and we cannot actually restart it. Okay, let's see what is wrong with it. Our laboratory is reprocessing the fuel. Hmm. The issue must be in decay heat. When the reactor is shut down, it has decay heat, because not all fission elements are automatically removed, and to reactivate it again, we actually need to wait, uh, wait until it cools down. So let's wait until it cools down, also let's wait until next transfer window from EVE to Kerbin and we'll see how it goes from there. So we managed to wait until the all decay heat is gone. And we also waited until the next transfer window. So let's restart our reactor, yes it is working, it is producing power. Now, let's go to our lander. And it is receiving some power, definitely. Let's check, just in case, if our station is transmitting, or maybe we're getting from the EVE orbital stage for some reason. Nope, everything is going from the carbon. So let's create our maneuver node, 
and it is even better than the last one. So let's orient, time warp, and let's try burning. Hmm, <laughs> nope. So there are two possibilities. The one possibility is that our receivers are just too small and cannot receive enough power. The second possibility is that we're too far away from the source of the power for our receivers to get the full capacity. Hmm. So if the first option is correct, then there is nothing we can do and we are basically doomed. If the second option is correct, then maybe we can use this orbital stage as retranslator and do the relay thingy. Also maybe we can finally coax the, our antimatter laboratory to produce things. Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. It just doesn't want to produce antimatter, even though everything required is there. So to be perfectly honest, I have no idea why it doesn't work and how to make it work. As you can see, we have power for antimatter containment, we have power for creation anti of antimatter, but the production is 0, 0.0 per day. Hmm. That is just wrong. I would really love to know why it doesn't happen and the only thing I can think of is that antimatter containment unit doesn't like being connected through the docking port. And to prove that this thing actually works, here is a little test bed I've done on the Corbin. So here we have fission reactor doing the tritium breeding. And as we can see in a minute, the tritium levels will be rising. Yes, they do. So now we can use this produced tritium and deuterium that we have to launch our fusion reactor and produce more power. Just like that. Here we go. It is producing power. Great. Now we can use this power to activate an antimatter factory in the laboratory module. And we're going to do it in a minute. Here we go. And we can immediately see that we can produce 27 micrograms of antimatter per day. The only difference between this craft and the one we used for EVE orbit is that this one produces its power on its own and that the antimatter containment is connected directly to the ship without the docking port. So let's produce some antimatter. As we can see it's constantly rising. I think it is being counted in micrograms or nanograms even, but that is completely enough to launch the antimatter reactor and produce a lot of power. So let's wait until daytime and let's launch our 135 gigawatts reactor. And it works. Everything is there. It is producing power. Well, at the moment it doesn't because there is no demand but it can produce up to 135 gigawatts of thermal power. On the EVE lander or EVE orbital stage we used a lot less and we didn't need 135 gigawatts. That's why we took only small antimatter reactors with us. And yeah, I honestly have no idea why it all failed. I'm going back to the drawing board and we'll see if I can produce better spacecraft which can withstand all these issues. But until then, thank you all for watching. Hope you liked this episode. If you didn't, press dislike button. 
and comment in this section below about what you think. Once again, thank you all for watching, my name is Darlok and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!